so I'm on my way to meet Bennett, the DP of Changelings, and so it's our first meeting re regarding the project. Maybe we'll talk about themes and story, it's kind of what I'm hoping to tackle. I've been building out the world a little bit more with the tear, and uh, I know that that was a last minute addition with this new version of the script, so Bennett hasn't had much time to absorb that. I'm very curious what he thinks and how that's going to interplay and inform the story. Side note, I need to start working out again. Just walking, it's got me mildly winded. Note to self and to everyone out there, keep working out. All right, so that was the one bit of verite that I got today uh, for the show. I'm sorry that we have to be stuck behind this uh, computer for the rest of the vlog, but thanks for stopping by for the 17th installment of the Changelings 90-Day Vlog Marathon. Today, as you can see by the intro, I met with Bennett Cerf, the DP of Changelings, and it was productive. Um, I have to say that I'm beginning to understand that Bennett has a pretty different conception of... I think what constitutes rational and normal uh, or common sense for storytelling. Uh, and that's okay. You know, we definitely see the world in different ways. And I think that that could be beneficial so long as we're on the same page uh, in general for the story. A healthy back and forth uh, debating human action, I think, is always important to determine, you know, whether or not something is actually making sense uh, or whether or not in the context of the story it pushes things forward, even if it is irrational. Um, you know, I tend to see humanity or people as mostly rational, but prone to highly irrational episodes. We are capable of highly irrational actions. And in the story for Changelings, one of the Changelings is after another to take vengeance upon it over a broken heart. Now, since the creature can make more of itself, it begs the question, why can't our protagonist just make another one of him or it? in order to not be alone, because that was something that Bennett brought up, was why is one Changelings pursuing another when it could just make another one of itself if it doesn't want to be alone? And it was interesting that Bennett thought that the purpose of the Changeling that is hunting the other was to find community or to find communion with you know another one of uh, its kind or to not be alone or to find love. It really is vengeance. It's a, it's a highly irrational a point of view that our character is suffering from and wallowing in and steeping in. And I want to explore a character that starts out that way, thinking that its whole purpose is out of is out of the desire to find satisfaction. But the question that follows the protagonist along the way is, is its actions driven by free will or is it driven by nature, something that is compelling him to move forward? Like the example I gave today was, when I ordered my breakfast burrito, when we were talking about the film and the story, did I order the breakfast burrito because I willed it, because I wanted it, or is my consciousness merely, you know, going along for the ride, surfing on this biological meat bot? You know, I'm just observing what's happening, but, you know, how much control do I really have? And that is something that our characters have to come to, come to terms with. And Bennett was thinking the whole time, like, this is very irrational. This is not something somebody would do. If someone was lonely, someone would go find someone to be not lonely with or to find companionship with. But as far as I see this character, it's not that they're lonely, but, of, you know, of course they're lonely, but the, 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 the drive is not to quench the loneliness. The drive is to, is to satisfy themselves with the amount of suffering they're going to inflict on the person that caused them suffering. And that's a highly irrational place to be. I have felt that way before. I haven't acted on it, but I have felt those pangs of vengeance of wanting to hurt somebody because they hurt me. But thankfully, because I'm a kind and decent human being, nothing happens. And so, you know, it's something that I'm going to have to work through the script to better explain and uh, to make sure that when we're, you know, when I'm talking about this with other people, that aspect is really, really locked down. And I think that people are reading the script thinking, that it's about loneliness or it's about trying to find companionship. And although the script does lean on a romantic notion of that, uh, it, it really isn't about that in its totality, especially when we start talking about the bigger picture of the, of the feature. And, um, you know, I think that probably I have to go a little bit harder with the vengeance theme a little bit uh, to really play that aspect up. 
and play down the romantic sentimentalism in it. I think that that's a weakness in my writing as I tend to get a little sentimental now and again, and I'm trying to get beyond that. Not only that, but because it's about identity and because it's informed by what's happening in society today about uh, gender identity and, and trans issues, that sort of informs the piece. You know, he, he was asking, is, you know, can we bring it closer to something like that? The film is informed by this debate, but it isn't about trans issues. It isn't about being closeted homosexual. It isn't about these things. The character is really driven by revenge, but the internal conflict or the question that really plagues the character is, is this me doing this or am I driven by my nature to do this. The character in the film is drawn to the other changelings. For better or worse, there's something compelling it to find the other. And I mean that in a very literal sense. Imagine if you were a duck and you were flying south for the winter. Uh, there's evidence to suggest that ducks can see or at least sense of the magnetic field of the earth in order, in order to determine where south is. I sort of imagine it like that. Like the one changeling can sort of sense the other generally, like south, that way south, but it, it can't pinpoint. That raises a question in the changeling's mind. Am I really drawn to this creature out of vengeance or is this something that I'm telling myself because I'm being drawn to it biologically? Uh, so th these are some of the big existential questions that I'm trying to deal with. And so I'm obviously I'm gonna have to do some more research in this regard, uh, but that's generally where I wanna go with it. We didn't get to talk too much about visuals today. We talked a little bit about lenses. I'm a big fan of vintage lenses, so I was wondering if it was possible to use the same lenses Dean Cundy shot the thing with, because I just I love the flaring, I love the way it looks, it just it just has a nice quality to it, a vintage quality, which I really, really love, but I think that that's going to be unaffordable, and I guess it's neither here nor there. So we didn't get to talk too much about aesthetics, but that's okay. So I realized that I have to go back to my script and do some more work on it to try to clarify some of these questions that Bennett was having about the story but also how to inject these themes that I'm talking about into the sizzle or the trailer, because I only get about a minute to two minutes to really convey the story. And so one thing that we were talking about was uh, formulating a new scene to create a, an overarching dialogue that, that paces us through the scene. So not only are we rhythmically uh, hitting notes that are tense and crunchy and scary to really drive the piece visually, but also the sound ups or the, the dialogue that I'm going to be placing in between shots, uh, I need that to drive a more coherent story. So that was something that he, he touched on was that for the sizzle, we need to really inject the core of the story with something like a scene, something that conveys the strangeness of the piece, the subversiveness of the piece, but also the the nuts and bolts of what the whole thing is going to be about so that when you watch it you think oh yeah i really want to see that i i, I love the visuals right you, you know hopefully we hook the audience with the visuals hopefully we hook the audience with the sound and the sound design and the tension but also thematically you know i want the audience to be into the themes of it uh about identity and about vengeance and about uh, nature versus free will these are the things that i'm hoping that the audience if i can convey them in a very uh, visceral way in a very intense way then maybe these things will come through and then and finally, hopefully, after the song and dance have captured your attention, hopefully the story keeps you around. Uh, anyway, so that was the meeting with Bennett today. I thought it was very productive. I obviously need to do some more work story-wise to clarify some of these questions that he had about how I'm going to be dealing with identity and how uh, a character could be acting so irrationally in what I think he perceives as a very rational world. I think that we need further discussion about that. But I think that's, I, I think that's going to come once I do some work on the script this weekend. I'll let you know how that goes. In the meantime, I'm going to be meeting with Mike Pedraza, our editor for Changelings, next week. We're going to be sitting down and talking about the script and talking about editing and how editing is going to shape Changelings. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. That'll be a nice long discussion. Let me know what you think of identity and of vengeance and rationality and irrationality and how you feel you would like to see those things portrayed in cinema or in storytelling. What are the things that really excite you about those topics and how would you like to see them portrayed in film and storytelling? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.